Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be going over how you can create the shiny effect for this button, and then a little frame button, and then just a normal text button. It, they all have the same animation. Um, so firstly, with the text button, it's just a normal button, right? Your shiny button has to have a UI gradient, and then under the UI gradient, um, for the colors, you do whatever. Just have white in the middle of it, so then that way, like, that's going to be a shine effect going across. And then set the offset to zero point one, and then I'll include a download for this. Um, but I'm just going to go over this. It's a whole UI handler for it. But how you create a button, right? Is your frame button, right? So with a frame button, it's just a normal frame, but what they just click under it because most people use frames for the button. Um, you just input the frame button, right? And then the size that you want. This is going to be your hover size, and this is going to be your click size. And then this is going to be whether you want the button to shine or not. And then this is going to be your callback function for when your button gets clicked. Um, make sure that they are active because active is a lot better than using mouse button one click because active checks for an actual click versus mouse button one click. For example, for mobile players to use it and they slide their finger over it, the button will activate. The dot activated physically checks the button if it was clicked. And then this is the shine button, so I'm using the same properties, but that just applies the shine effect. And then with the normal button, same thing as a... I'll get over how it checks if it's a frame button, or if it's a normal button in this script right here. And then, so this is a camera object, I'm going to be creating frames, uh, frame twinning later for the buttons. And then this is your scale, scale twin enums. Um, I'm trying to make this script, like, for you guys to understand, easily customizable. So everything's in the setting properties and then that's about it for that and then for your shine twin enums this is going to be if you want it from left to right or right to left forward reverse this is going to be your create twin function i'll leave this alone it just returns a twin these are for your camera settings this twins your camera fob and this would twin your camera blur i'll cover that next video whenever i do the frame tweening and then this is your tween scale for your buttons um uses the settings using style and direction so you can easily change those it creates a tween let's just quick clean up on here i do this just for safety i'm 90 percent sure uh roblox by default cleans it up but i do it for safety so it prevents memory leaks and then here's your button science settings um it sets off the offset the negative one by default um and then you can either do left or right like i said matter and then for your ui scale that's how it does the buttons so you don't have to do any touching with the button scales you just input it to the function this is your handle button so it checks if there's a button connection already existing if there is then it's not going to do it because what's the point it already has a connection it's not <laughs> you don't need two or three different connections for one button it stores it in a table. Um, it creates the UI scale for it. If not, it will find the UI scale if there's already one for it. It connects the signal and puts it into the button. And then it gets the signal. This is where I was coming from. So if there's a click object under it, it returns a button.click for the event name. If not, it just returns a normal button with the event name. And it connects the signal for your mouse enter. And then if you have to use shine, plays a shine, creates a scale, and plays a hover sound. Uh, for the mouse leave, it goes back to normal. And then, same thing here for the mouse button one down. Hey, they clicked. Cool. They let go. That's it. And here's what I was talking about the activator function. This is where it's going to call your callback. Like, for when you can actually click the button and it's going to play your click sound. And then you can play this if you really ever want to. Like whenever they leave or something, or if you reset their UI upon death, I would call this where so whenever you recreate their UI, it recreates the buttons. Um and it's gonna clean up their old button connection and release. And then with this button shine tween, you honestly could change this from a local function to a class function. So if you have like a pet inventory and you want it to be on like a loop, um it would be on a loop the pet inventory for like a shiny pet or something you can just do this and you just do like a, a task up the way or a task that spawn for each one. i wouldn't do task that spawn personally 
want to purchase no reason then it would have that like shiny pet effect but for now local function and that's basically it um if you want to give this place a copy i'm going to link in the description so you can download this place and then there'll be um frame between animations so like pop up the frame from the bottom then you can either have it go to the top depending out where you have it go to the bottom whatever you all want to do you just pass that in and that's about it please be sure to like comment and subscribe and join the discord if you're really interested in my projects yeah thank you